Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Thursday, May 20th. We're continuing out of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. And we remember in 1976, Indonesia annexed East Timor after the sudden withdrawal of the Portuguese. It is estimated that 200,000 Timorese died under the brutal and violent Indonesian rule. After years of violence between separatist guerrillas and pro-Indonesian paramilitary forces, East Timor gained its independence on May 20th, 2002. Today, East Timor is one of the world's poorest countries. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our song for this morning is What Wondrous Love. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul, what wondrous love is this, O my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul? Find us in your love, O Lord, and lead us in your path. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of God's benefits. The Lord forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. God redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. God satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Find us in your love, O Lord, and lead us in your path. Our Old Testament reading continues out of Numbers chapter 22, verses 21 through 38. The next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and left with the delegation for Moab. But God was very angry because Balaam was going, and God's angel stood in the middle of the road to bar the way. Balaam was riding on the donkey with two assistants accompanying him, one on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road holding a sword, she turned off the road into a field. Balaam started beating the donkey to get her to go back onto the road. But the angel of God stood on the narrow path, which was between two vineyards with walls on each side. When the donkey saw the angel of God, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of God moved on ahead and stood in a place narrower yet, where there was no room to turn right or left. When the donkey saw the angel of God, she lay down under Balaam. This enraged Balaam, and he started beating the donkey severely. Then God opened the donkey's mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me three times? Balaam, not thinking anything was strange, apparently, answered the donkey, You made a fool out of me. Why, if I had my sword in my hand, I would kill you this instant. But she said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you've always ridden to this very day? Have I ever acted this way before? No, Balaam replied. Then the Lord God opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of God standing in the road with a drawn sword. And Balaam bowed low and prostrated himself before the angel. Uh, oh, still going. Um, <laughs> then the angel of God said, Why did you beat your donkey three times? I came here to bar your way, for your path is a reckless one before me. Three times your donkey saw me, and three times she turned away. In fact, if she had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, though I would have spared her. Balaam said to the angel of God, I have sinned. I didn't realize it was you standing in the road to confront me, but if you so desire, I will turn back. God's angel said to Balaam, Go with the delegation, but say only what I tell you. So Balaam traveled with Balak's de delegation. When Balak learned that Balaam was coming, the ruler went out and met him at Ar Moab near the Arnon on the frontier. 
Balak said to Balaam, didn't I send delegations for you time and time again? Why didn't you come? Did you think I could not honor you with enough money? Balaam replied, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Balaam replied, well, now I am here, but are you presuming I have the power to say something I like? I am only able to say what God tells me to say. Our New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 56. When Jesus returned, a crowd of people was waiting for him and welcomed him. A man named Jairus, an official of the synagogue, stepped forward and fell at Jesus' feet. He begged Jesus to come to his house for his only daughter, who was 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus moved along, the crowd almost crushed him. In the crowd was a woman who had suffered from hemorrhages for 12 years and had found no one who could heal her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When no one nearby responded, Peter said, Rabbi, it's the crowd pressing around you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I felt power leave me. When the woman realized that she had been spotted, she approached in fear and knelt before Jesus. She explained in front of the crowd why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone from the house of Jairus, the synagogue official, arrived and said, your daughter died. Don't trouble the teacher anymore. But when Jesus heard this, he said to the messenger, don't be afraid. Have faith and she will be made well. When he arrived at the house, Jesus ordered no one to enter with him except Peter, John, James, and the girl's parents. Everyone was weeping and wailing for the child, but Jesus said, Stop crying, she's not dead, just sleeping. But they ridiculed him, for they knew she was dead. Jesus took her hand and said softly, Get up, child. Her breath returned to her, and she got up immediately, and he told them to give her something to eat. The parents were astonished, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. Find us in your love, O Lord, and lead us in your path. 20th century Presbyterian theologian and writer Frederick Buchner has written, Who knows how the awareness of God's love first hits people? Every person has their own tale to tell, including the person who would not believe in God if you paid them. Some moment happens in your life that makes you say yes right up to the roots of your hair. That makes it worth having been born just to have happen laughing with somebody till the tears run down your cheeks, waking up to your first snow, being in bed with somebody you love. Whether you thank God for such a moment or thank your lucky stars, it is a moment that is trying to open up your whole life. If you try to turn your back on such a moment and hurry along to business as usual, it may lose you the whole ball game. If you throw your arms around such a moment and hug it like crazy, it may save your soul. How about the person you know who, as far as you can po possibly tell, has never had such a moment? Maybe for that moment, that person, the moment that has to happen, is you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Give us grace to be present at those moments, Lord, when your love is real enough to taste. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.